Okay. I'm delighted to introduce Ken Heideman, our next speaker, who's the Director of Publications at the American Meteorological <laughs> Society. <Good answer>. Yeah. <laughs> And they have the most fabulous offices right off Boston Common. It's really, really a lovely location. Okay. Ken received his BA in Geography at the University of Vermont and then made a somewhat tough transition to get a um, Master's in Science in Meteorology <laughs> at Penn State. He worked at a, as a research mete meteorologist. <laughs> in Colorado before joining the Air Force Geophysics Lab here in Boston. In 1998, he changed gears and became a technical editor at the AMS. And the following year was promoted to be director of publications. By far the most challenging and, and rewarding a part of um, part of his job, he says, has nothing really to do with journals or weather. It's managing a team of 30 people. Ken is also the president-elect of a sister society to SSP, the Council of Science Editors. Okay, you can all hear me whether I'm in front of the mic or not, I assume. Okay, I want to... You need me to speak into the microphone. Okay, so now I'm doing that. So, um, first of all, I want to thank um, Ellen, and I want to thank October for the introduction. I want to thank Ellen and all of you for, for having me here. And I, it's an honor for me to follow Bob Kelly, because he's not only a colleague, but he's a very good personal friend of mine. And I'm just really happy to be here. So um, I am the Director of Publications at the American Meteorological Society, and it took me a year or two to get to be able to say that fluidly or fluently. Um, and, um, you know, in addition to controlling the weather, which takes up a lot of our time, uh, we also do publications. And we have 11 journals. They're all peer-reviewed. Um, all but one of them is available in print and online. Our uh, printer is the Sheridan Press in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Our compositor is Dartmouth Journal Press in Dartmouth, uh, no, Waterbury, New Hampshire. And our online host is Adipon, and we use them through Allen Press, which is in Lawrence, Kansas. And we publish roughly 1,700 manuscripts a year, uh, and that comes out to about 26,000 pages a year. So uh, we are a smaller elephant, to use the elephant analogy, and as you'll see in terms of open access, we're a slightly different color elephant than APS, but we're still an elephant. So we are trying to do the same things overall. So there we go. Okay, so in terms of open access, our definition, and that's why it's in lowercase OA, is that uh, there's free access online without need of a subscription. And what we're doing um, as a society is incrementally we're moving closer and closer to capital O, capital A. Um, and uh, we do maintain the copyright so that we can act as uh, perpetual stewards uh, for the content. This is our copyright uh, statement on, on the uh, lower right. Um, anybody can use brief excerpts of our content or figures or that kind of thing simply by uh, properly attributing the material. So one of our journals is uh, the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society, or BAMS for short, and all of our members uh, get that. Um, and BAMS has uh, been free and open, the articles in BAMS that is, we have other features, columns and features, but all the articles in BAMS have been open access um, since 1997, and BAMS went online from cover to cover in, in, uh, at the beginning of 2009, and that digital edition is available uh, only to members. Uh, when I when I first got to AMS in 1998, uh, there was no wall. You know, you, you had to pay for any content, no matter how, how old it was. We instituted uh, a five-year wall, uh, or embargo, if you will, um, in the early 2000s. Then around 2008, we shrunk that wall to two years. Anything older than two years is free and open to the world. And in our discipline, that's um, saying something, because our, our average uh, 
a citation half-life is 10 years. So we're not a biomedical type of organization where after six months things are obsolete. It, it's, it's, it's a very long half-life. So we're at two years right now. And um, uh, we also uh, partner with open access institutional repositories. NCAR's Open Sky is an example of that. Um, and uh, those repositories can, can uh, post our articles in a PDF uh, form six months after publication. Um, and we also have what's called uh, EOR, or Early Online Release. So as soon as, as, soon as a, an article is published, then the, um, the abstract of all of our articles is available to everybody. And if you subscribe to uh, a particular journal, then an article that has just been accepted is available to you immediately. But we have all kinds of disclaimers about the fact that between the point of acceptance and actual publication, there, there likely will be significant changes. So, uh, but we, we, uh, we only want one version to be in, a rep in the repository. We don't want multiple versions out there and the final version the published version is the official version as far as our uh, uh, business model it's it's fa it's fairly balanced um, between subscription income and uh, and author, author charges it's actually a little bit more on the author charge side it's gotten a little bit more that way a little bit less on the subscription side and the, this combination allows us to grant partial or full waivers to authors uh, who have trouble uh, securing funding. And that adds up to around three or $400,000 a year that we uh, provide in waivers of, of pay charges. It also helps for us to pay for clerical assistance for our uh, uh, chief editors and editors of our journals um, around the world. And, um, and we also like to think that we have high quality journals as well and the stewardship in perpetuity actually costs money as well so that's where the uh, the business model is based i just did something i should not have done um that's okay. we can fix it. might have to forward a bit. Okay, but. sure. Okay, in terms of reducing uh, the, the barrier of subscriptions in terms of uh, prices, our, our uh, subscription prices are among the most affordable in science, around 15 cents a page. Um, and, and members have uh, access to all of our journals for a total of $80 per year. Um, they can uh, subscribe to one journal online electronically for $30, but why not pay 80 for all all of our journals? So that's what we call our bundle. That's been very very popular, and we also uh, help the developing world. Um, we are partners with OARE, and we have our own program to provide journals to the developing world as well. And um, as I say at the bottom, we welcome any rec recommendations from the community as to how to extend that program. I, I seem to be um, doing this on a regular basis. <laughs> it's okay. Just use the space bar. Space bar. Yeah. Okay, and the, the, the last thing I wanted to mention is, uh, to stay in front of the microphone, the last thing I wanted to mention uh, is that we are, as of May of 2012, we will have open choice that will allow individual authors or teams of authors to um, have open access into articles on an individual basis. Um, the fee that we will charge is $800, which is um, well below what the, the quote unquote market value for that is. And, and we, we plan to use the income from those open access fees to help further reduce the subscription costs to all of you because we know that you're being squeezed from every conceivable direction. So that's my presentation, and I uh, thank you for your attention. Okay. We have time for a few questions for Ken. Any questions here? Uh, I, I'm really glad to hear that, that you have this as one of our doctors, which is a lot of stuff. In light of that, what 
what, what uh, stewardship functions have you actually performed, or towns the need to perform uh, with regards to well, it's it's maintaining um, the archives um, uh, and also uh, protecting the integrity of the content um, in terms of plagiarism and that kind of thing. If anything like that arises, then we are responsible for following up on that and um, uh, and taking whatever legal steps are necessary. And we we have done that in, on occasion. Fortunately, it's not it's not something that happens a lot, but it might happen once a year or so. Uh, so that is something we've had to worry about. Okay, the next question we're going to record you. So hold on. <laughs> we very much appreciate uh, the policy that allows us to copy the final published article and put it in an institutional repository after the six months. Thank you for that. I'm wondering about the, the background of thinking uh, that went into that decision. Was that felt to be a, a risky move? And how did you overcome the feelings of risk, if so? Or uh, how did that fit into your ov overall business model and the thinking that went behind that decision? Well, we, you know, philosophically, we think that um, being as open as we can is the, is the right thing to do. So that uh, when we, th that's why we've done this sort of incrementally. And what we feel is, and what I feel personally, is that there's many flavors of open access. And that's, that I think if societies are kind of left to their own devices and are rational societies, that they will take the steps um, incrementally, if, if necessary, to open up um, without having to be legislated to do so. You know, you will be open access by February of whatever year. The, this is the natural flow. And, and it, we feel that if we were not on board with that, then we're kind of anachronistic. Um, and in addition to that, we've got ourselves in a, in a place in terms of um, print where, uh, versus electronic that if, if, if print were to go away, um, we, we could actually survive that at this point. Whereas four or five years ago, we would not have been able to survive. Uh, and we only have 8% of our subscribers right now who are actually print only subscribers. The others are either print and online or online only, but if they're print and online, they've activated their online. So they really have an electronic component to it. So we're feeling more secure in the marketplace and we're not going to proactively kill print. That's not, that we'll never do that. But we're in a position that if the market decides that print kind of goes away, we'll be able to, to, to handle that. So, and there was a question back there. Yes. Hang on, Ann. Thanks, October. Um, the question I have is your, your implementation of your open choice um, option, will you be using your current copyright uh, transfer or will you embrace something like a Creative Commons license which is for some of us perhaps uh, a more liberating uh, contract? We are looking into Creative Commons. Yes, we are. Okay, one more question for Ken and then we're going to open it up for both speakers. Another question for Ken? Okay, Ken, thank you so much. Um, 